Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today what I have for you is episode 6 of my FIFA 23 Bradford City career mode. If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 20 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 400 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification below. It's free to do so and it does massively help out. We're back for another episode. We're already over halfway to the episodes that I did last year, so hopefully it can continue. By the time this comes out, my Football Manager 23 beta save with Tottenham Hotspur should have started as well, so if you're interested in that, make sure you go check that out. The first episode went out on Friday at 6 o'clock, but today what I have for you is three more matches once again. Hopefully we can have a much more consistent episode today. We face Mansfield Town at home, then we have a trip away to Grimsby, which is actually the game by the time you've seen this, which will have been yesterday in real life at at the moment and then we'll also be ending today's episode with another game but we can't see that far ahead at the moment so whoever that game is we'll get to it when we come to it but certainly some tough games Mansfield is certainly not an ideal game to be starting with because they are a very very good side let's get into the first game here we have it then. Here's how we line up for the first game of today's episode at home to Mansfield Town. We line up in our new 3-1-4-2 formation. We've got Harry Lewis in goal. A back three of Timmy Odessina, Jan Songo and Romney Critchlow. Richie Smallwood as the holding midfielder. Dion Pereira on the right-hand side with Arthur Dunn over on the left-hand side. I saw some comments about maybe playing Arthur Dunn as a striker, but with our lack of left midfield natural options and our amount of striker options, I'm going to keep him on the left midfield for the time being. We've got Gilead and Osadibe in the centre of midfield field with Andy Cook and Viden Oliver up front. We've got Angle, Chapman, Issa, Sutton, Ahmed, Platt and Doyle on the bench. Hopefully we can get Ahmed a debut in today's game as well as he was unfortunately unable to do so in the last one. They're playing a very, very weird formation. Ollie Hawkins is playing... Uh, uh, that is bizarre to say the least. That is a very, very odd formation. They've got three centre-backs and then Ollie Hawkins is like a left sweeper. Two very wide wingers. They've got a right defensive midfielder and a centre-central midfielder. A centre-forward and a striker. That is a peculiar formation. Let's get into it. Here we have it then. It will be Mansfield Town to get us underway. Resorts kicks us off now. If Nigel Clough is still the manager of Mansfield Town. This formation that they're playing is either going to be a stroke of genius or an absolute disaster class. We're starting out very strong here early on and six minutes on the clock. Alex Gilead puts us ahead. Mansfield, as we kind of expected really with the formation that they've lined up in all over the place. It's been a very fast start from us and with five minutes on the clock, it's Bradford City 1, Mansfield Town 0, a perfect start to today's episode as we come forward again here with Osadibe who cuts inside, this time Hawkins completes the tackle, 18 coming forward with the ball here, looks for a ball through, good inception though from Richie Small. it gives an opportunity to break here, Dion Pereira plays the ball down the line looking for Andy Cook, ball into the box, I think it's Vidin Oliver who gets on the end of it in the end but his shot is well saved by the keeper from the corner. We can't really do anything with it. Still in the penalty area. Andy Cook on the ball finds Dion Pereira into Osadibe. Another great save from Pim. Osadibe picks the ball up here in the centre of midfield. Finds Viden Oliver. Smallwood goes that way into Gilead. Bit of space. Can he get a ball into the box? He finds Viden Oliver who finds Dion Pereira. Another great save from Christy Pim. But somebody was offside there in the build-up. Not long left to go now before half time. It was a very explosive start from us in the first half. Very impressed with what I saw in that first half an hour. It has been pretty much all us since then. We could really do with scoring that second goal just to kill it. We've got another corner here which Smallwood puts into the box. Once again though it's well defended by Mansfield. There is the half time whistle. A very dominant first half from us. I don't think I'll need to make any changes as of yet. But we will definitely need to make some in the second half. Couple of tired bodies out there. But but it's not having... Uh, sorry, with us having a week's break until the next game, I'm not in too much of a rush to make changes. Let's go on to the second half. Viden Oliver picks the ball up, goes into Richie Smallwood, back to Viden Oliver, into Andy Cook here. Smallwood now finds Osadibe, into Andy Cook. Can he work a shot? Osadibe shoots just over the bar, and I think that's a perfect opportunity now to make some of our substitutions. Angle will come on for Andy Cook. Osadibe will come off for... Probably Harry Chapman. I know he can't really play as a central midfielder, but he, he can do a job there. Get Levi Sutton on the pitch as well. We may as well get Ahmed on, I think. Or oh, we could get Issa on. Can Issa play on the right wing? I don't think he can, can it? Oh, he can. Issa can play on the right wing. What we could do, actually, is put Sutton there. Put Songo there. Songo can play DM. This game's so daft. Right, anyway, we'll go back to what the original plan was. So we've got one more sub left, and we'll also get Ahmed on at left midfield. Couple changes. Let's get into the rest of today's game. Issa picks the ball up, finds Levi Sutton, slots it through. Videnov with a chance, it's bouncing around, it's tapped in. But it's offside again. 
Angle picks it up, finds Harry Chapman, plays the ball through into Gilead, who finds, I think that's Issa with a shot, it goes wide, and Gilead has picked up a book in there. He's picked up a book in for making a successful pass. Doesn't really make sense to me. Lee Angle on the ball, he slots it through to Vidal, Oliver. a big opportunity for Vads, and he's dragged it wide. Oh, that's a big chance to kill the game. If we don't end up winning it, that could be the chance that costs us. But Chapman picks the ball back up here. Spreads the ball wide here into Ahmed. On debut, finds Angle. Back to Ahmed. Can he work something with it? He finds Chapman who shoots over the bar. There is just seconds left now in today's game. Can we see it out for what will be an absolutely massive win? Yes, we can. Big, big three points. Mansfield didn't really offer much throughout the whole game. So if he didn't win that, it would have been fairly undeserved. But that is a massive win. A big... Big win that. Hopefully we can kick on now and get some consistency built together. This is what I've been talking about in the last couple of episodes. We need some consistency. Let's go to Grimsby now and pick up all three points. As one transfer offer for Lee Angle breaks down, we've got another one here. First exchange play that we've got. Mark Cabro, or Carbo, has been offered and also a £43,000 fee. The player in question is a 28-year-old, 62-rated central midfielder. Now, we could actually do with a central midfielder, to be honest with you. With us only having, I think it's Osadibe and Gilead, who are naturally in central midfield. We're having to play players like Walker, Chapman, who in that position. I know, obviously, Smallwood and Sutton can play there in real life, but on the game, they can't play centre mid. So I wouldn't be against this all too much. Very similar age and overall. Angle has a little bit more value. If we can get more money for him, I actually wouldn't be against this whatsoever. I'll do some negotiations and we'll see if we can get a little bit more money. Right, we want to propose a new transfer fee. Would they be happy with 150000 on top of the player swap? They say they want it. 63,000 is that's still not above his value. We need minimum 75,000. Oh, I'm not even going to consider it, right? If we drop this down to 125,000, what is their response to that one? 83,000. So they are slowly coming up now. Whatever we accept after this, I'm more than happy with. What about 105,000? Would you accept that one? What do they say to that? Fred, your advice off for angle doesn't meet our expectations. We have to pull out on the deal altogether. All the best. I thought they might have accepted that or at least come back with a little bit more of a counter offer. It's not the end of the world. The player they were offering was 28. Oh, I wasn't too interested in that. But first time I've really done a negotiation with the op option sorry, to swap with another player. Certainly an interesting one. Hendry has come to me here and he says, I needed to let you know that I've been reading some of the stuff that people have been saying lately about me and my future. I just wanted to ask you to give me another chance to prove I'm the right man for the job here. Now, the problem with that is we're not currently playing with fullbacks. And if we are, he's second choice right back. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say I'll think about it, but realistically, I don't think Luke Hendry will be getting much game time unless we have a Papa John's game coming up soon, which I don't think we do. The final match of today's episode will be against Doncaster Rovers. I did just see that come through, but at this moment in time, we have another press conference for the match away at Grimsby Town. Are you looking for more goals today? To be honest with you, the finish in the last game was quite poor, but we go into the same every game with the same attitude of wanting to score as many goals as possible, wanting to convert chances. Can you keep this great run going? Again, we got asked this last time. I don't think we're on a great run at the moment. We're on an okay run, and I'll give them credit for that, but it's certainly not a, a great run. Um, let's not get distracted, you know, we take each game as it comes, one game at a time and all that sort of stuff. Final question, how will you motivate your players today? Any player that needs motivation to play for Bradford City will not play for us. I'm not worried about the team. If they can't get up for a football match to play for this absolutely humongous football club, uh, then they shouldn't be at the club, should they? Let's get into the match. Once again, the full strength team is available from the last game, so no changes from the last one. Hopefully for a similar outcome as well. Let's get into it. Sean Scannell is not involved in the squad at 4 Grimsby Town, or at least he's not starting. Viden Oliver gets us underway. Scannell is not also on the bench either. Interesting that McAtee's fit and doesn't get selected by Paul Hurst. Hopefully in real life we can pick up the win in this game as well, because at the time of recording, that game's tomorrow. But when you watch this video, it'll have been yesterday. So hopefully it's a win in both games. Osadibe finds Viden Oliver. He goes out wide here to Dion Pereira. Can he get a ball into the box? He finds Osadibe. Can we work a shot here? Arthur Dunn now. Cuts inside. Can he get a shot off? He finds Andy Cook. Into Smallwood. Back to Andy Cook. Goes into Dion Pereira. Questions of offside. And offside is given there. A little bit hesitant to shoot at the moment is what I'd say. Andy Cook on the ball. Finds Viden Oliver. He goes into Dion Pereira. Ball back into the box. Oliver with a shot and it's scrambled over the line. I think by Gilead once again. He's been scoring a lot of goals recently. It's not going to count though. Question marks of offside. I think against Gilead, unfortunately, that goal will not stand. But can we score here? Because this one certainly will stand. Dion Pereira finds Smallwood. Back to Dion Pereira. Cuts in, shoots. 
It's not going to stand if you put it over the bar. Andy Cook picks the ball up. Can he work some magic? Ball into the box. Eventually he's cleared. I think that's by Waterfall. Now Grimsby come forward with it here. 29 finds 27. He goes into 15 who shoots just wide of the target. It's been a very even game so far in this first half. We've had a couple more chances than them, but still, again, lacking that conversion rate at the moment. When Andy Cook's not scoring, we seem to be, our goal rate seems to slow down. I mean, look at the stats. We dominate the ball, 71% possession, but they've had more chances. We've had more shots, but not really done a fat lot with it. Let's get in to the second half and hopefully we can start converting some of these chances. Grimsby come forward here, 27, ball into the box. It's great defending though from Romney Critchlow there to keep it out. Andy Cook finds Emmanuel Osadibi here, back into the box. And it's just lacking end product at the moment from the Bradford City players. We are going to make some more substitutions. We'll get Smallwood off again for Levi Sutton. We'll get Pereira off for Harry Chapman. We may as well... Actually, Critchell's a little bit tired there, isn't he? So we'll get Matty Platt on for him. Andy Cook's going to come off for the angle. We will chuck Arthur Dunn up front and bring Aboisa on. Someone suggested Dunn up front, so we're going to try it. Let's see if he's got the facilities to do it. Let's get on with the rest of today's game. Arthur Dunn on the ball here. What can he do with it? He comes inside... Finds Lee Angle, into Osadibe, back to Angle, back to Osadibe. Can he get a ball into the box? Finds Lee Angle, into Harry Chapman, finds Arthur Dunn! And it's a 92nd minute winner from Arthur Dunn. It's another scrappy 1-0 victory in a game where we've had so many chances to kill it. The last kick of the game, Arthur Dunn. Maybe he could be the man to lead the line going forward. It's a great finish. And in the 92nd minute, we come away with a dramatic 1-0 win. Once again, back-to-back 1-0 wins, back-to-back -back clean sheets. Very, very positive signs. Let's get into the final game of today's episode. Here's how we line up then for today's game. I believe at home to Doncaster Rovers. Five changes from the usual side. Just trying to go with a couple of different plays to see if we can try and score more goals because I'm more than happy to win games by one or two goals, but you want to be winning by three and four. So hopefully these changes are a solution to that. We've got Harry Lewis in goal. A back three of Matty Platt, Jan Songo and Romney Critchlow. Levi Sutton as the holding midfielder. Tyreek Wright, obviously on the right. Osadibe and Gilead maintain their place in the middle. Arthur Dunn is out on the left with Kian Harra and Lee Angle getting a start up front. On the bench then we've got Andy Cook, Harry Chapman, Dion Pereira, Richie Smallwood, Colin Doyle, Timmy Odessina and Ahmed as well. Let's get into it. Hopefully we can pick up another three points. If we manage to win all three games in today's episode, it'll put us in a very, very nice place. Yorkshire Derby as well. Let's get into it. Here we have it then. It will be George Miller, the former Bantam, to get us underway for this game. Obviously it finished 0-0 in real life. Couple of red cards and an absolute, well... Promotion winning celebration from Doncaster at the end of the game. Fingers crossed we can absolutely hammer them 4-0 because that would be very nice to see, wouldn't it? Angles in on goal, rushes the shot and again misses the target. George Miller spun away from Jan Songo here. This is not what you want to see. Great save though from Harry Lewis. That's what you want to see. Even though Songo's made a rare mistake there, Lewis helps him out with that one. It's a brilliant save. Another shot comes in there from Lee Tomlin, but he's dragged it wide. Doncaster come forward with the ball here. Number seven on the ball, cuts it back. Great save again from Harry Lewis. George Miller with another opportunity there. Brilliant save from Lewis, and we've got a chance to counter here. Arthur Dunn shoots. Oh, he probably should have passed that, but I'm not going to complain. Arthur Dunn with another piece of solo individual brilliance. I don't even, I couldn't even get my words out there what I was trying to say, but it's just beautiful from Arthur Dunn. He's very, very good, isn't it? It's Bradford City 1, Doncaster Rovers 0. We take the lead in the Yorkshire Derby just before half time as well. Can we see this out as George Miller's in on goal here? Out wide to Lee Tomlin. Number 7 picks the ball up back to 33. It comes to 21. 10 on the ball. Suspense is building and eventually we should be able to clear. Osadibe does clear it and that is half time. For once, we've been absolutely battered, but we're winning again. That shows signs of a very good team. Let's get into the second half. Lee Angle gets us underway. Doncaster coming forward here. It's a good inception though from Jan Songo. It's about that time, I believe, to make some substitutions. Andy Cook's going to come on for Kean Harrett. We'll also get Smallwood on for Levi Sutton. We may as well get Ahmed on. Oh, actually, no, we'll get Odessina on for Romney Critchlow. We'll also get Chapman on. Actually, no, we'll get Dion on. For Tariq, right, we're bringing on some really, really good quality players here. And then final sub, we shall bring on... Uh, we'll bring Arthur Dunn off for Harry Chapman, but I'm a little bit reluctant to do that because Arthur Dunn has had a big influence on today's game. Osadibe is actually in on goal here. He squares it for Kean Harrett. Great save from Jones. 
Andy Cook picks the ball up here, finds Lee Angle, spins away from his man beautifully. Oh, what a goal that is from Lee Angle. That is beautiful. He doesn't score many goals, but when he does, they are usually very, very nice goals. 68 minutes on the clock. It's Bradford City 2, Doncaster Rovers 0. Miller coming forward here again with the ball. It's brilliant defending from Jan Songo. He's been in Songo's pocket for pretty much the whole of the game so far. Doncaster coming forward here with it. 21 on the ball, but again, great defending from Matty Platt. Odessina steps in well and finds Gilead. Andy Cook now finds Dion Pereira. For some reason, he's gone with a near post there on his weak foot. I'm sure that shot certainly favoured a far post shot with his stronger foot, but unfortunately for our sake, he's failed to make it three. And there isn't long left to go now in today's game. Doncaster probably going to get one more attack here, but once again, it's obviously that man, Jan Songo, cutting out the ball into the box. There's your full-time whistle. Four goals scored. No goals conceded. What a beautiful episode. We're like that Chelsea team where they conceded like 10 goals in a season or anything like that. That's how I feel after today's episode. Keeping a clean sheet in three straight games is fantastic stuff. That episode will have done us a world of wonder as well. Is that even the right saying? I don't know. We're up to fifth in the table. That's what I'm trying to say. We're in a very, very nice spot at the moment. But that is where I'm going to leave it for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 20 likes. As I said at the start of today's video, that would be absolutely class. Subscribe if you are new as well. We are now on the road to 400 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed. If you haven't already, with that post notification bell on, it's free to do so and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts on today's episode as well down in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day and I shall see you all very soon for another video. I think the next episode should be out Wednesday at 6 o'clock. I'll see you all then. Peace.